Hey guys, Get Level here, and today I'm gonna be showing you my workflow for creating animated overlays for your live streams. Now I already have a bunch of videos on how to create your own animated overlays without even using an editing software. Straight into Streamlabs OBS, you can already create your own animated overlays, so check out those videos. But today, we're going to be using two different programs. We're going to be using Adobe Photoshop and we're going to be using Adobe After Effects. If you don't own any of those programs, well, I'm sorry. Just you can watch the video and still get the idea of how it's made so you can do it in your own program whatever you're using if i show you a, a white box and i move it from left to right no matter what editing software will allow you to do pretty much that so you don't need to have those specific softwares i know my my comments is going to be flooded with people who say i don't have after effects can you do it on this can you do it on that just get the idea and apply it to your own editing software so for a free editing software like photoshop you can use gimp that's free uh, you can use Pixlr, that's uh, also free and that's web-based. For free editing, video editing software, I've heard of DaVinci Resolve, I've heard of HitFilm Express, there's a bunch out there, just Google it, Google it. Okay, my goal here is to go as fast as possible, so I'm not going to show you a whole overlay pack, we're just going to be creating, uh, let's say, a starting soon screen. So let's get right into it. I'm Completely gonna improvise this, I, I haven't prepared anything. So we're here inside of Photoshop, I am using Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud, and we're gonna press Ctrl N to open a new canvas. By default, mine is already on 1920 by 1080, that's a normal 1080p uh, canvas. That's what my screen is at, so that's what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna click OK, and it's gonna open this, okay? So something I like to do is double click the background to unlock it. And uh, we're going to do the most basic stuff like creating shapes and then from and then adding text. That's all you need to do. So if whatever program you're using allows you to create a square and, and add text, you'll be able to do it in your program. And if you can't do that, you should be looking at tutorials on basics, even if it's Photoshop. I have created a square right here. Um, I'm going to double click on the icon, the square icon, and I'm going to choose a color. That's going to be my main color for the overlay. Uh, I realize I haven't done anything in, in, um, in a good orange in a while at least. So we're going to go with that. I want it to be a little bit more red. So uh, we have one orange square. I'm going to duplicate the square. Uh, my way of doing this is holding alt on my keyboard and then dragging and dropping it in my layer uh, panel here. So now I have two orange squares. I'm going to double click this one and I'm going to give it some sort of dark gray. If you guys have seen me do live streams where I do graphic design, you know I love dark gray. And I'm going to move that up. I'm holding shift so it doesn't go all over the place. So it's a linear um, movement basically. So I like what I have right now. And what I'm going to do is duplicate that dark gray layer again and this time I'm gonna drag it down well I have a I, I did look at some like basic inspiration of Google to to kind of know what I'm about to do put that in the middle okay so um, right now it's not gonna stay like that obviously but right now what I'm gonna do is uh, add my text so I want starting soon to be my text I'm gonna click off of this because it wants to to be restrained to that layer so I'm gonna click off so no layers are selected I'm gonna click once uh, right now my color is purple I don't want that I want uh, white to be my text color so I'm gonna click OK and I'm going to type starting I'm gonna hold shift so it's well I don't need to hold shift but I'm just gonna type starting okay a vengeance mightiest is my default font I'm gonna look for another font Okay, I found a font that I like and I'm going to place it. So right here, it shows me the middle. If you're using a version of Photoshop that doesn't show you the middle, you can press Control A to select the whole canvas and then top here with the move tool selected, you can choose to center it uh, horizontally or vertically. In that case, uh, it was vertically. <laughs> now you can press Control D to deselect everything. So I like what I have right now. I'm going to press Control T to open up the free transform tool. And I'm going to make that a bit smaller. I'm going to bring it close to the edge like that. And now I'm going to duplicate this text. 
I'm going to bring it up just for visibility. It's going to have a different color. I'm going to double click on the T here, basically the icon of your layer, and I'm going to type uh, soon. Okay, cool. I just realized it wasn't centered, so I'm going to click on paragraph here so that if I type later, which is, that's just me doing stuff. <laughs> this this will not help in the future because we're done. We're not going to type any more text. And now I'm going to color this uh, orange. There are multiple ways to do that. If you're on the pen tool while your thing is selected, you can select it here. You can change the color from here, okay, from the top if you have the pen tool selected. If you don't have it, you can have the character panel here. If you don't have the character panel here, you can go to Windows and then Character to make it appear. I, I love using this. So I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to color pick the orange. So it's going to look like it disappears, but it's just the same color as the background. And um, I'm going to control D to deselect and I'm going to drag this down just like that. Okay. So right now we have a pretty cool result, but something that I always say in graphic design is everything that is uh, just linear like that doesn't necessarily look as good as if it was uh, diagonal. So we're going to go for that diagonal. Uh, type of design. I'm going to click on this and I press control minus to zoom out. And uh, I'm going to select my shapes first because I do need them to be quite large. So right now they're not large enough for, for uh, rotating yet. If I rotate them, they might never mind. I was wrong. Okay. So now we're going to select uh, this with the text. I'm holding control to select and deselect stuff. You can also Select the top thing, hold shift, click down, boom, you got it. So now I'm going to press control T to open up the free transform tool. I'm going to hold shift so I get like a clean rotation that's minus 15 degrees. I can also go like 45, 30 to 45. Um, we're going to stay at minus 15 because I think that's a pretty good look. Okay, I'm going to control Control Z this real quick just to make sure that the soon is centered because when it's tilted, it doesn't look like it's centered and that is concerning. Oh, it is centered. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. So select the top thing, hold shift, select all everything, Control T, open up Fruit Transform tool and then give it a minus 15 rotation. Press enter and now you have uh, this. Very basic stuff. I usually would spend hours on those, but this is just for the tutorial uh, purposes. So now I'm going to play with it a little bit just to give a little more details because this is very, very flat. Um, I'm going to select the top layer here and I'm going to select the drop shadow. Basically, you click on the layer you want. Bottom here, there's a thing that says effects and you click drop shadow. I'm going to make a very, very soft and uh, barely visible shadow. Just to give it, that gives it a kind of a realistic feel and it it basically simulates a little bit of depth, okay? Uh, one thing is cool is that once you have the effect on your layer, you can double click it and adjust it, okay? Uh, you can collapse it here, but also the effects thing, just like I was holding Alt to duplicate my layers, I can also uh, hold Alt here and duplicate the effects. So I'm going to drag it to the orange layer and right now we also have a uh, drop shadow on the orange layer which is not something that i want right now but you could do it if you want if you wanted that so i'm going to do that for the other one the thing is uh, the shadow is going down like that what we can do to bring it up a little bit is just close the distance in the shadow so i'm going to double click on the effects and i'm going to take a close look at here and lower the distance and I'm using, I'm on the wrong stuff. I'm on the wrong layer. So <laughs> let me click, double click on drop shadow on the bottom one and do that. There we go. So now we have a little bit of shadow, but just a little bit. So it's still realistic. Technically, if your shadow is going um, towards bottom right, it's because you have a source of light that is top left and you don't want that to be, um, you don't want to be any confusion. I am going to add a gradient overlay. So just like we did the drop shadow, I'm going to go down for it on the effects panel. I'm going to click gradient overlay and I'm going to try to simulate that light I was talking about. Oh, that's my default overlay. Um, we're going to go for a black and white one and um, we're going to try to place the light top left. Remember our basic color was dark gray. We don't want this to be from white to black. So I'm going to change the 
um, I'm going to make sure that the blending mode is set to screen. So only the brightest parts are showing on top of my already existing canvas, basically my already existing lit color. <laughs> a hard time speaking, apparently. Okay. So now if we want to copy one single effect, what we can do is hold alt gradient overlay. And now we can drop it on this other one. Boom. Now it is dropped. We can adjust it a little bit, lower the opacity. We can play around with, with this too. Can I get the darker parts to be closer? There we go. I'm not getting enough of the dark here. Play with the scale. Those are buttons you have to play around with to know what they do. Until you get an effect that you're satisfied with. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with what I have right now. So this is where we're going to save the Photoshop file, right? We're going to save the Photoshop file and we're going to press Control S or you can go file save. I'm going to call this one. It kind of looks like uh, some eSports stuff. We're going to call it what sport? And we're going to call this one starting soon. Now, what we're going to do is basically go into After Effects. We're going to open the Photoshop file because, well, Adobe makes After Effects, Adobe makes Photoshop. So it's kind of easy to um, get those layers inside of After Effects and then we can move them around. Right. So I'm going to use basically After Effects to animate everything. Control Z on that. Control S to save. And now we're going to open up After Effects. 